Welcome to Academic Game Tutorials. In this video, we will learn about Vapor Absorption Refrigeration System, along with its different parts and functions. So, let's get into the topic. We know that refrigeration is the process of lowering the temperature, by removing unwanted heat from a selected object, substance, or an enclosed space and transferring this heat to another object, substance, or space. The vapor absorption refrigeration system we are discussing today uses the ammonia water system for the refrigeration process. And it also needs solar energy in the refrigeration process. So, this vapor absorption refrigeration system can be also termed as an ammonia water cooling system. We can even call it a solar cooling system. Now, let's look into the major parts and components and basic working procedure of vapor absorption refrigeration system with the help of solar energy. First of all, here we have an absorber. Inside this absorber, we have a solution of ammonia and water. And, beside this absorber, there is a pump. Now, when solar energy is supplied to the system and the generator, then this pump starts working. Then using this pump, we will pump this solution of ammonia and water from this absorber to this generator. So, the function of this pump is to transfer the solution from the absorber to the generator which is running on solar power. Now, when the solution of ammonia and water reaches the generator, here, heat is produced inside the generator using the solar energy supplied to it. And, when heat is applied to this solution, both ammonia and water from this ammonia water solution turns into vapor inside this generator. We also have an analyzer inside this generator. When this vapor of ammonia and water is passed through this analyzer, the analyzer sends the water vapor back to this generator, and it only lets the ammonia vapor to pass through. Then from this generator, the residue of water vapor accumulated here will be passed back to the absorber again through this connecting pipe. Now, even after passing through the analyzer, there will be some proportion of water vapor mixed with this ammonia vapor. So, here we have a rectifier. This rectifier can also be called a separator, because it separates the rest of the limited amount of water vapor present inside this ammonia vapor through the exchange of heat. So, through the exchange of heat, this rectifier will convert the water vapor into liquid form, and separate it from ammonia vapor. Then, this separated liquid water is passed back to the generator, from there it will ultimately reach the absorber. Now, after separating the water vapor, here we have obtained pure ammonia vapor. But actually this is not a 100% vapor state of ammonia, because when heat exchange occurred inside the rectifier, the ammonia vapor has also converted into partial liquid ammonia. So, this pure ammonia in the partial liquid form will leave the rectifier and enter the condenser through this connecting pipe. Here, we have a condenser. When high temperature high pressure partial liquid ammonia vapor enters this cold condenser, then the condenser absorbs the heat from the partial liquid ammonia vapor, and completely converts it into liquid. This condenser can be water-cooled or cooled by any other substance from an external source, which will liberate the latent heat of this vapor coming into the condenser, and thus condensing keeps happening. Now, here we have an expansion valve. After condensation, liquid ammonia will leave the condenser and pass through this expansion valve. Now, this high-pressure liquid ammonia, coming from the condenser, will be expanded inside this expansion valve. We know that when expansion occurs, the pressure between the molecules decreases considerably, thus the temperature falls. So, this high-pressure liquid ammonia will be expanded into low-pressure, low-temperature liquid ammonia. Thus, here we get very cold, chilled, low-temperature liquid ammonia coming out of the expansion valve. Then. This liquid ammonia will be passed over to the evaporator. We all know that, the main cooling effect or refrigeration effect always occurs in the evaporator. So, when this low pressure, very cold, chilled, low temperature liquid ammonia will enter the evaporator coils, it will absorb all the heat present in the surface of the evaporator coils. By absorbing all the heat from the surrounding surface of the evaporator coils, this cold chilled liquid ammonia will turn into low pressure ammonia vapor inside these coils, and the surrounding surface of the evaporator will become cold by losing the heat to this liquid. Thus the cooling effect or refrigeration effect has occurred in the evaporator. After that, this low pressure ammonia vapor will leave the evaporator, 
and enter the absorber again through this connecting pipe. Then again, this low pressure ammonia vapor will form a solution with the water present in the absorber. The pump will again send this solution to the generator, where the heat generated by solar energy will again form ammonia vapor and water vapor. Then again water vapor is sent back to the absorber. Ammonia vapor passes through the analyzer to the rectifier and the whole cycle keeps happening over and over again. And thus refrigeration occurs continuously in the evaporator, and the surrounding space keeps cooling continuously. So, this is how a solar vapor absorption refrigeration system works, where solar energy is used to obtain the cooling effect. Thank you for watching this video. If this video was helpful, subscribe to my channel Academic Game Tutorials for more updated videos.